Bible How saints in the past Held fast to God's promise With the faith to the test Well you know they had a hold of A powerful hand Cause in the midst of the storm When they should have gone down They found strength to stand So let the flood waters roll Let the storm winds blow let everything fail as I stare at my soul It may hinder me, bring me down on my knees That's far as I'll go Cause now the battle's been lost on that old rugged cross I'm gonna reach heaven no matter the cost The next mountain I climb, I just might find Dark stormy days that will live again, but they're bound to shake us from time and again. But the same grace He gave to them is given to me. Same mighty hand that caused them to stand still gives victory. So let the flood waters roll, let the storm winds blow, let everything hell as I stare at my soul. It may hinder me, bring me down on my knees, but that's far as I'll go. Now the battle's been lost on that old rugged cross. I'm gonna reach heaven no matter the cost. The next mountain I climb, I just might find sweet heavens in view. So let the flood waters roll, let the storm winds blow, let everything to stare at my soul it may hinder me bring me down on my knees that's far as I'll go cause now the battle's been lost on that old rugged cross I'm gonna reach heaven no matter the cost the next mountain I climb is I just might find sweet heavens in me the next mountain I climb, I just might find sweet heavens in Dear saints, gathered both locally and abroad, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank the Lord once again that we have this opportunity to be able to go into God's Word. We thank the Lord for His hands of protection over our lives and the lives of saints gathered across the world. Let's bow for a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful to be gathered together in Your presence. You're the God that has watched over the lives of your children. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, it has been your mercy and your grace upon our lives, Lord. Father, without you, we can do nothing, my God. I pray this morning, dear Lord, that you will touch every child, Lord, wherever they can be, my God. May your anointing fall upon them, my God, and may your presence be with them, my God. We pray, Lord, that you will anoint our lips of clay this morning, 
Lord, for a few moments of time, my God, may you anoint your precious word. Let something be said, my God, that will be beneficial to your people living at this hour of time. We ask these mercies now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, we thank the Lord that we can have this privilege once again, that we can be able to worship our God in spirit and in truth. Last week, uh, we dealt with the subject, knowing the time. The Apostle Paul was talking to the Romans, uh, and uh, he exhorted them that they should know the time. Now, we have a few more scriptures to deal with, uh, and uh, we want to try our best this morning to try and bring a concise picture of how we can be able to relate uh, to the hour and time that we are now living in. We're going to turn in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 7. The word of God says, Yea, the stalk in the heaven knoweth at appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that God has created uh, the world and has created uh, the birds of the air that are migratory birds. Uh, they know uh, when uh, to be able to move through the different seasons. But the word of God says, My people know, knoweth not the judgments of the Lord. Uh, my brothers and sisters, all the seasons that God uh, deals with these people. Now, we are living at an hour of time where God, no doubt, has spoken to his people through his precious word so that they can be able to know the time that they are living in. The word of God says, Blessed are your eyes, for they see. Now this morning, my brothers and sisters, uh, we want to go in the book of Revelations, chapter 10 and verses 7. And uh, we are titling our message this morning, The Hidden Gentile Timepiece. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, as we look at the scripture here this morning, the Bible says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now my brothers and sisters, most of us are familiar that the seventh angel talked about in the scripture is the seventh church age messenger. My brothers and sisters, and we know that we are living in that seventh church age, the Laodicean church age. Now but brothers and sisters, uh, this scripture states uh, that when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God. Now we realize that the word mystery means uh, something uh, that is not easily understood. It's like a secret. My brothers and sisters, uh, but uh, we will try and elaborate this phrase, the mystery of God, as we go on with this subject. But it says the mystery of God should be finished. In other words, this mystery of God is going to be completed in that period of time when the seventh church age messenger, as his message is being sounded out in the world. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we look in the book of Isaiah, chapter ten and chapter one and verses ten, the Bible says. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, they shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, we see uh, in this verse, brothers and sisters, uh, the word of God says, uh, that uh, there would come a, a period of time when my brothers and sisters, God is going to deal with Gentiles, my brothers and sisters, uh, 
And that is going to be a mystery to the Jewish nation. So that is why the word of God says uh, the mystery of God. Now my brothers and sisters, as we look at this chart this morning, we realize that in the mind of God, brothers and sisters, before the foundation of the world, this aspect of the mystery of God was in his mind that he was not only going to deal with Jewish people, but he was going to also deal uh, with the Gentile people. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, but we realize that the Jewish people could never ever accept the fact that the Gentiles would be given salvation like they would be given. And that is why, my brothers and sisters, we see that when Jesus Christ came almost 2,000 years ago, my brothers and sisters, and salvation was offered to uh, the nation of Israel, they rejected that salvation. And my brothers and sisters, uh, God started what we would call the Grace Age. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the gospel was given uh, to uh, Jews uh, initially. But brothers and sisters, after a while, we realized that the Jews, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we're also rejecting this gospel and then God uh, opened the doorway to the Gentiles. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, period of time that God uh, was going to deal with Gentiles, uh, no doubt uh, was a mysterious period to uh, the Jewish nation. And that is why it is called the mystery of God. Now my brothers and sisters, we know that this period of time has got uh, a dispensation of time to it and uh, we will look into it a little later in the, in the, in the scriptures but we know brothers and sisters uh, that that period of time is also uh, looked upon as the, the two days uh, in the book of Hosea. Now my brothers and sisters uh, when we look in the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 12 we will turn there. We see the Apostle Paul, my brothers and sisters, uh, is stating that at that time, Yahweh without Christ. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, it lets us know that we Gentiles, Brothers and sisters, uh, we did not have any promises uh, attached to us uh, that were known at that period of time. And the Apostle Paul says that at that time, Yahweh without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and the strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, the, the Jewish nation, when they looked upon Gentiles, they knew that they were outside the commonwealth of the program of God. That brothers and sisters, uh, they looked upon Gentiles as heathens, as idol worshippers. That uh, they were called actually uh, underdogs uh, from their point of view. But we see that that was not so in the mind of God. That brothers and sisters, uh, in the mind of God, uh, God had a designated period of time that he would deal uh, with Gentiles. And my brothers and sisters, uh, though God has spoken to the prophets down through time, those prophets that wrote the scriptures, they didn't even know that Gentiles will be brought into the kingdom of God. Those scriptures were written but brothers and sisters, they had no understanding of what those scriptures meant. Even when God spoke to Abraham and said that he uh, would be the father of nations, that my brothers and sisters, uh, through that seed, the, the nations of the world uh, shall be blessed. Brothers and sisters, uh, they did not want to interpret that scripture as Gentiles will be blessed. 
And that is why, my brothers and sisters, uh, even when God spoke to Peter and told Peter that he should go to uh, uh, the house of Cornelius, brothers and sisters, he went with mixed feelings because uh, the revelation was not given to Peter, though God spoke to Peter and gave him a vision, brothers and sisters, uh, that he should uh, kill and eat uh, even those unclean beasts. So we see that there was a certain segment of time that God would have an apostle on the scene and it would be given to that apostle that he would also show him uh, the understanding and the revelation how Gentiles would be brought in at a specific hour of time. Therefore we realize, brothers and sisters, uh, the understanding that Gentiles will be brought in, also the time period when the Gentiles will be brought in was something mysterious uh, in the scriptures. And God did not unravel all of this uh, in one uh, segment or to one individual as such. That is why we can see uh, that the word of God says that at that time they were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Brothers and sisters, there was a time Gentiles uh, worshipped idols. They did not know who the true and living God was. They had no hope. It is only Jesus Christ that brought hope to us and pointed us to who the true and living God really is. So, but the apostle says, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you with, in other words, brothers and sisters, uh, this dispensation that is called the Gentile age of time, brothers and sisters, which we know is the seven church ages, brothers and sisters, uh, that understanding was not unraveled uh, to the prophets that wrote the different scriptures. It was not even given uh, to, I would say, uh, the apostle Peter as such. Brothers and sisters, but it was the Apostle Paul that God gave this understanding to and related to him that there would be a designated dispensation in which God will start dealing with Gentiles. That is why we call this the mystery of God period. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, we realize firstly this aspect of Gentiles being saved was the mystery of God, which the Jewish nation did not understand. They couldn't see how Gentiles could be saved. But also, brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, within uh, that mystery of God uh, would be the period, the time factor in which God would be dealing with Gentiles. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, the Apostle Paul says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, uh, we see that, that though the prophets of old recorded this in the scriptures, but the revelation of it was not given to them. But the Apostle Paul says, which is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, uh, so we can see that before the foundation of the world, in the mind of God, God had this mystery brothers and sisters, uh, that was hidden in his mind, that in a certain period of time, my brothers and sisters, after Jesus Christ would come, brothers and sisters, uh, God would deal with Gentiles. My brothers and sisters, uh, God, uh, this mystery that was in his mind, was carried down through time. Brothers and sisters, wasn't revealed uh, to any of those uh, prophets what the meaning of it was. 
even after Jesus Christ came, my brothers and sisters, uh, the, the Jewish people uh, didn't want to accept the fact that there was any room for Gentiles. But my brothers and sisters, though uh, through the many uh, times that God uh, dealt uh, here and there, God uh, dealt with Gentiles, but that wasn't the dispensation. That wasn't the timepiece in which God was going to ex exclusively deal with Gentiles. So we see, my brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, God had this in his mind. Therefore, the Apostle Paul says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. This mystery of God that we see in Revelation chapter 10 and verses 7, that the Bible says in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished or completed as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. That means in uh, the Old Testament period of time, he had declared it to the Old Testament prophets. They wrote it down, but they didn't have the revelation of what it was. But in uh, the seventh uh, dispensation of time, brothers and sisters of the seventh church age, God will be seeking to close uh, this period of time. That is why we see uh, that mystery of God, which is that Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body. And now Gentiles were brought in. It is going to be in that seventh church age, when that seventh church age messenger starts to declare his message and it goes throughout the world, God will also be seeking uh, to bring uh, this uh, dispensation to a close. So my brothers and sisters, we can see that the Apostle Paul was relating all of this to uh, the early church and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things. And we know that these last three words here, brothers and sisters, by Jesus Christ, was added by translations. It was not in the original translation. Because Jesus Christ did not create the universe. It was God who created the universe. But we know in the mind of God, the entire plan was and Part of that plan was Gentiles will have an opportunity to receive salvation. There would be a certain designated period of time. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, today we are living uh, in the closing of the dispensation of time. So we see that it was hidden God. Now my brothers and sisters, we entitle the subject, the hidden timepiece for Gentiles. My brothers and sisters, this was recorded in the scriptures. But to the Jewish nation, brothers and sisters, they did not have the spiritual eye to understand that Gentiles will also be brought in and be fellow heirs of the kingdom of God. That they will be part of the same body of Christ. They couldn't understand that. They couldn't see that. And so my brothers and sisters, uh, we realized that the Jewish nation could not uh, see how Gentiles were going to be brought in. Now my brothers and sisters, the word of God says that God hides brothers and sisters is understanding from the wise and prudent. But he reveals it unto babes or individuals that have a desire to understand the word of God. Just as little children have an, uh, an ability or a desire to uh, ask questions all the time. You ask any little child and you talk to him something, the first thing they're going to say is why. And you're going to 
give them the answer, then they got another question, why? That is the inbuilt, I would say, desire to want to seek after understanding. And to children of God who have that desire, God will elaborate the picture in simplicity to them. So we see, brothers and sisters, in the book of Hosea, chapter 1, brothers and sisters, that was written some 2,800 years ago. God, in that first chapter, brothers and sisters, allowed the prophet Hosea to marry a woman of ill fame. My brothers and sisters, and one would think how God will allow a prophet to do this. But God was using this to depict his relationship with Israel. My brothers and sisters, no matter what the condition Israel was, he would still go after her. He would still love her. And he would still restore her back to himself after he puts her away. So my brothers and sisters, uh, we see that God hid many things, even uh, in, I would say, uh, stories, relationships, names, figures, and he did all of this many times to hide it from the wise and prudent. Now, my brothers and sisters, when God uh, allowed Hosea to be able to uh, marry this uh, woman, brothers and sisters, uh, her name was uh, uh, De Blaine, brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, brothers and sisters, uh, so he went and took Goma, the daughter of De Blaine. So brothers and sisters, uh, Goma, no doubt, came from that family uh, of De Blaine, brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, she gave uh, Hosea three children. And brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, we realize uh, that out of those three children, God was going to write the historical account of the nation of Israel. My brothers and sisters, uh, so we see that it says, uh, So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of De, De Blame, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, God is hiding a certain history of the nation of Israel in a name. In other words, uh, brothers and sisters, the first son that she had, God was going to show how, brothers and sisters, uh, God was going to deal uh, with the house of Israel. And my brothers and sisters, and it shall come to pass at that day, that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So my brothers and sisters, uh, that first son was going to show how God was going to deal with the ten northern tribes and how, brothers and sisters, the bread basket of the ten northern tribes that were situated, uh, situated where Jezreel was, was going to be destroyed. Then the Bible says, and she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call a name, Loruhama. Brothers and sisters, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly, utterly take them away. So brothers and sisters, uh, through another child, and the name that was given to that child, God shows what was going to happen to the ten northern tribes, that he was going to deal with them, he was not going to have mercy upon them, and he was going to take them and scatter them to the four corners of the earth. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that lets us know that when God writes things in the scriptures, he doesn't write it so that the entire world can read it like the daily news and understand everything. God hides an understanding in names, in the way he writes figures, and my brothers and sisters, true children of God, will seek the face of the Lord to want to know what the understanding of it is. Brothers and sisters, up till today, the world can read Hosea chapter one, chapter 1, and they will never understand what that is all about. But yet, brothers and sisters, in those names, 
the history that we can go back and see is being recorded and we can see brothers and sisters uh, how that name Lo Ruhama how it exemplified the ten northern tribes of Israel and has God had no mercy and scattered them abroad for he says but I will have, but it says but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow no by sword no by battle by horses no by horsemen my brothers and sisters when we look at the history of Israel how we can see that the ten northern tribes were scattered to the four corners of the earth and our God took the two southern tribes Judah to Babylon and my brothers and sisters after 70 years those children never fought against Cyrus but without bow and without military equipment God anointed Cyrus and said it's time for you to go back to your homeland so how clear the scripture is that God will save them without bow without sword and without battle or horses or horsemen all he did was he anointed Cyrus that he could have some kind of a feeling for the Jewish people and let them go back to their homeland so we see that aspect of the history of Israel came to pass exactly but then the Bible says but now when she had weaned Lu Ruhama that's the second child when she had weaned that child she conceived and bare a son a third child and my brothers and sisters uh, the Bible says then said God call his name Lo Ami for you are not my people and I will not be your God now my brothers and sisters when this scripture is written in Hosea 1 9 it is talking about those two southern tribes that came back into Israel to meet their Messiah and when Jesus came on the scene they reject him they never recognized him and my brothers and sisters uh, that is why that name of the child was called brothers and sisters lo Ami, and God said for you are not my people and I will not be your God now my brothers and sisters uh, this scripture is written in its completed state because while you read the scripture here we must understand by the time God speaks to the house of of Israel God has already been dealing with the Gentiles because brothers and sisters we're now going to go to that verse of scripture that is important for us to understand in Hosea chapter 1 and verses 10 it says yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them you are not my people there it shall be said unto them you are the sons of the living God now my brothers and sisters we 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 see in this verse of scripture brothers and sisters is uh, an understanding and a revelation concerning the Gentiles that would be brought in now when this was written in the scriptures brothers and sisters uh, the Jewish people never wanted to ever look in there and say well this may mean uh, that uh, somebody else uh, is going to be called the sons of the living God because brothers and sisters no Jew would ever want that to be uh, to be read that way and understood that way even Gentile theologians today when they read this scripture and they come where it's written it says that in that place they look upon it well this is talking upon where unbelievers uh, are living that God is gonna convert them and make them Christians 
But brothers and sisters, uh, this understanding is that that in the place, it means in that period of time when God actually pushes the Jewish people away, brothers and sisters, and starts to cut them off, in that period of time, God will be dealing with Gentiles and call them the sons of the living God. Right here we must see the importance, brothers and sisters, of some words. The Bible sh says, and it shall come to pass that in the place, that's in that period of time, where it was said unto them, brothers and sisters, that is the Jewish nation, where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There, that word there, brothers and sisters, uh, is not talking about a special city or the, in that dispensation, in that period of time. It shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Now my brothers and sisters, when God wanted to bring the dispensation of grace to the Gentiles, my brothers and sisters, he had to unlock a certain scripture. He had to allow an apostle to go through the scriptures and be able to pull out a scripture that he can base his revelation upon. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we see the Apostle Paul. My brothers and sisters, after Jesus Christ came, my brothers and sisters, and he started the first church age. My brothers and sisters, it was in that church age that God gave the Apostle Paul an understanding, my brothers and sisters, uh, of how God was going to bring in Gentiles, my brothers and sisters, in a certain dispensation of time. That is why, brothers and sisters, as we look now in the book of Revelation, it says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophets. Now my brothers and sisters, we know from this verse of scripture, the Bible says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Now my brothers and sisters, we know that the seventh church age messenger is not on the earth today. But my brothers and sisters, this is talking about that period of time when God would have had a church age messenger on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, when the word of God says, when he shall begin to sound, that doesn't mean when his ministry started. But brothers and sisters, uh, it means uh, when he begins uh, to preach a message and that message goes to the four corners of the earth and it's understood uh, by the true children of God, brothers and sisters, and it's reaching uh, its final climax. Then, my brothers and sisters, in that period of time, God would also be drawing to completion that mystery of God uh, that he had in his mind before the foundation of the world, where Gentiles will be fellow hers with the, the Jewish people. So my brothers and sisters, because he says here, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. My brothers and sisters, uh, so in one small word, hath, is a key word. Brothers and sisters, uh, what was declared uh, to the Old Testament prophets that brothers and sisters uh, was a mystery to them. Brothers and sisters, uh, the Godhead 
was not a mystery, brothers and sisters, to the Jewish nation as such. The Jewish nation knew there is only one God. It's the Trinitarian world that, brothers and sisters, that is a mystery too. But the mystery to the Jewish people is they could not understand how Gentiles could be brought in because Gentiles are underdogs, they're heathens, and they couldn't see our holy God can bring in undeserved Gentiles. That is why the word of God says the mystery of God. It's not a mystery to Gentiles. We know that we are saved through Jesus Christ. We know that we have been brought into the kingdom of God. That's not a mystery to us. Brothers and sisters, but to the Jewish people, they cannot understand why Gentiles would accept Jesus Christ as their savior and how they can ever be brought into the kingdom of God. And therefore, brothers and sisters, uh, we can see that in our generation, God is going to complete that plan that he had for Gentile people. So brothers and sisters, uh, we can see We'll just go to this chart momentary. My brothers and sisters, that we lived in a period of time. My brothers and sisters, when God had an apostle on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, it was through this apostle on the scene that the book of Isaiah in this generation of time became Brothers and sisters, a book that people wanted to delve into because they felt there was a timepiece in that book. And my brothers and sisters, without elaborating much, we know, brothers and sisters, that Brother Jackson, brothers and sisters, looked into the sixth chapter of Hosea. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he had a calculation that my brothers and sisters, that he calculated from I would say 33 AD, and my brothers and sisters moved in time when that he felt by 2004 and a half or five, brothers and sisters, that two days would have been completed. And my brothers and sisters, uh, when uh, that calculation, brothers and sisters, uh, did not materialize in the sense that the revival for the Jewish people was not on ground, then my brothers and sisters, uh, men began to bring about a further understanding that, well, you know what? This is the way we should read Hosea chapter 6 and verses 2. Then my brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, after two days, they said after two comes the figure three. And therefore, we're living in the third day. And my brothers and sisters, you and I know what confusion that brought. But the word of God, when you read Hosea chapter 6 and uh, verses uh, 2, I'll, I'll just read it to you. It says, after two days, will he revive us? Brothers and sisters, no way... It is written after two days in the third day. It says after two days he will revive us. That means after two dispensational prophetic days the revival of the Jewish nation must be on ground. And uh, we know after 2004 and a half no revival has taken place. For the past 16 years no revival has taken place and therefore that two days has not been completed. You don't have to worry about the third day at all because the verse of scripture clearly says after two days will he revive us. Then it says in the third day he will raise us up which is another time period. So we have to finish two days 
and we have to see a revival, then you can talk about the third day. But we see teachers in this hour, because that calculation didn't come about, they forgot about the revival, and they started to talk about the third day. So, brothers and sisters, if that calculation of Brother Jackson did not materialize, we living at this hour of time should not be open to the Spirit of God to understand that the, the picture and the timepiece of the two days will still have to be understood by children of God. They cannot live with an open-ended understanding that when the 70th week comes, uh, starts and begins, then we can measure back and see when was the starting point of the two days. Brothers and sisters, uh, that is not looking at the word of God correctly. Because when God spoke to Isaiah in chapter 6 and said after two days, he, didn't, he did not tell anybody I'm talking about Gentile timepiece. Because in chapter 1, and verses 10, he has already said, in that place, or in that time, when it shall be said, they shall be no more my people, I will say to them, they are the children of the living God. Right there, in verses, chapter 1 of verses 10, is the starting point of the two days. It doesn't give you a day, it doesn't give you a month, it doesn't give you a year. But it gives you, brothers and sisters, uh, when God will start dealing with Gentiles. That is why, my brothers and sisters, we can go back to this chart and we can see that my brothers and sisters, after 69 weeks of time for, gen, uh, for the Jews, God brought the Lord Jesus Christ on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, for the first 20 years, God was not dealing with Gentiles. God was dealing specifically with the Jewish people. And my brothers and sisters, uh, though there were individual or families that were brought in like the house of Cornelius and all. But brothers and sisters, at that period of time, the revelation of the dispensation of grace for the Gentiles was not given to Peter. My brothers and sisters, Peter was given to unlock, brothers and sisters, that grace age. And it started initially with the Jews first and then to Gentiles. That is why we can see for this first 20 years from I would say approximately around 33 AD to around 53 AD God had not broken an understanding that he was going to deal with Gentiles brothers and sisters but after I would say approximately 20 years passed by around 53 around that period of time brothers and sisters we don't have the Bible that gives us a date or a year we have history that we have to go by with. And the historical records tell us around 53 AD, brothers and sisters, that is when I would say Paul started to start the Ephesian church age. Brothers and sisters, so we can, we can realize that between 53 AD to around 57 AD, brothers and sisters, somewhere during that period of time when Paul was having a revival, Brothers and sisters, God brought and put a revelation in his heart. The Jewish nation is now not wanting that gospel anymore. Paul could see it. And my brothers and sisters, uh, Paul could see now this dispensation for the Gentiles have set in. And my brothers and sisters, that is why we can realize, brothers and sisters, that... The Apostle Paul went in to
to the scriptures again. Brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul, it was not some man in this hour of time that brought the revelation. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verses 25 says, As he saith also in O.C. This word, O.C., Gentiles, they read past it. They, if you ask any Gentile preacher today, what is O.C.? They don't know what it is, but brothers and sisters, as he saith also in the book of Hosea, brothers and sisters, I will call them my people which were not my people and a beloved which was not beloved. Those Gentiles that were looked upon by the Jewish nation, that they were not relevant to the kingdom of God. God says in that designated period, God is going to call them brothers and sisters, uh, the sons of the living God. That is why another translation says, it brings it out a little more clearer. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, brothers and sisters, we've heard over and over again that people say that the two days has got nothing to do with the Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, but yet the Apostle Paul was the one that went to the prophecy of Hosea to talk about the mystery of God. And he himself said that concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. Brothers and sisters, God hid the history of the Jewish people in the names of Hosea's wife for the world not to understand the history of the Jewish people. Brothers and sisters, God hid a time piece for the Jewish people nation in a yardstick that he gave to Daniel. He said 70 weeks. Brothers and sisters, God could have said exactly the number of years. Why did he put it in that terminology? And my brothers and sisters, when we look at when Jesus Christ was coming the first time, the religious people of that day, they didn't know where he was born. They didn't know when he was born. But brothers and sisters, three wise men, brothers and sisters, uh, they came from the east. They came and they said, where is he born, king of the Jews? How come the entire Jewish race couldn't, with what information was given, couldn't know that the Messiah was already born? Already two years he was born and they didn't understand it. That lets us know also, brothers and sisters, in this time, there will be individuals that will be reading the same word of God. And they will say, well, I don't see a timepiece in the scriptures. I don't see a yardstick for us now. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because of the calculations did not happen in the past. God had a reason why he allowed it not to happen. Brothers and sisters, look at the statement that Brother Branham made. Dual statements and statements. That by 1977, he didn't say Jesus Christ will come. But a major portion of people in the message took that statement and was separated from the true pathway. Again, when God sent an apostle... There was a calculation. Again, a lot of people didn't accept other things that were relevant that the apostle brought. Because some way they say, well, the calculation didn't come to pass. What did that do, brothers and sisters? That put fear into the hearts of people. Well, you know, whenever we hear about a calculation, 
or a timepiece or something in the word of God, we will close our eyes to it. My brothers and sisters, that is what the devil wanted the church of God to come to. So that they will not be able to understand how to get ready. Because brothers and sisters, uh, actually, at this hour of time, brothers and sisters, with what is happening on the face of the earth, you do not need to tell people time is running out. Because brothers and sisters, the critical condition that is on the earth today is making everybody want to know what is going on. But brothers and sisters, to the church of the living God, they are children of light. And God, just as he gave an understanding to the three wise men, not that we or any one of us are have wisdom above anybody else. But brothers, the Bible did say, the wise shall understand. And my brothers and sisters, to sincere seeking children of God, they will be able to see that the seven church ages, brothers and sisters, that as an historical beginning, that you can go by in history and take a starting point, though you don't have to measure time from the beginning that historians give, because we have an understanding, brothers and sisters, the first day that Paul started to preach, you cannot call that a church. It took a little time for the Ephesian church to be established. That is why we say between 53 to 57 AD, somewhere in that period of time, God is the one that starts to mark time. And my brothers and sisters, if you be able to move time from that point, 2,000 prophetic scriptural years, it brings us to a point, brothers and sisters, between, I would say, 2024 to 2027. Brothers, that's not giving any specific date, but it is being able to let us know we are living in that decade when we can expect the coming of Jesus Christ that we can start getting ready, brothers and sisters, and prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, because Brother Branham's calculation did not, I would say, work out the way people read it, or Brother Jackson's calculation did not work out, that didn't mean we should take an erroneous understanding of Isaiah 6.2 after two comes three, and we're living in the third day, the Bible says in Isaiah 6, 2, after two days, he will revive us. That means, brothers and sisters, when two days are completed, 2,000 prophetic years, we will be on the doorstep of the revival for the Jewish nation. And we can watch events, we can see how events will transpire and we'll be able to understand how time is moving. And brothers and sisters, God did not leave us without a hidden timepiece. Brothers and sisters, he allowed us to see that the Gentile timepiece was actually those seven church ages. Brothers and sisters, because ages relate to time. And in order to look at time, we can be able to see when the Ephesian church age, brothers, God started it, and we can be able to see how God will close the Laodicean church age. So we see, brothers and sisters, the, the Apostle Paul, he got his revelation for the starting of God dealing with the Gentiles from the book of Isaiah. My brothers and sisters, we do not need to wait till Daniel's 70th week is completed and then look for a starting point in the scriptures. The starting point is in Isaiah chapter 1 and verses 10. In that place, in that period of time, where it shall be said, brothers and sisters, you are no more my people. 
I will call them, the Gentiles, the sons of the living God. My brothers and sisters, that is why we can say that we have something to go by with. Brothers and sisters, and it shall come to pass in that place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. My brothers and sisters, to the Jewish nation, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3.9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things. Even the mystery which had been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Brothers and sisters, how glad we should be that mystery of God, we come to understand what it is. That mystery that the Jewish nation never understood, but we Gentiles understand that brothers and sisters, salvation was brought to us. We can see, brothers and sisters, it is a mystery that has been hidden my brothers and sisters, to the Jewish race. The Bible says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now my brothers and sisters, for us to understand that this mystery among the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, that is talked about, my brothers and sisters, in the book of Revelation, chapter 10 and verse 7, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. My brothers and sisters, when it shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, should be completed. My brothers and sisters, that mystery is dealing with how God would bring Gentiles into the kingdom of God that the Jewish nation was blinded to. That is why, brothers and sisters, we can read. The Bible says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophets. My brothers and sisters, we are the generation that had lived and are living as this message has been going throughout the world. And my brothers and sisters, it is not the voice, the actual voice of Brother Branham that brothers we are hearing or have heard. It's that message that he brought. The voice here is the message that he has brought. And my brothers and sisters, the mystery of God is actually, brothers and sisters, how Gentiles in this arena of time, brothers and sisters, will be brought into the kingdom of God. That is what was declared, brothers and sisters, by prophets in bygone area, arenas of time. That is why we can say, brothers and sisters, almost 2,000 years has passed by. Brothers and sisters, that seven church age Brothers and sisters, is the period of time God was dealing with Gentiles. And my brothers and sisters, it's between that period of time from Ephesian to the late in church age is where that timepiece is in. And uh, we can say, brothers and sisters, that when the word of God says, after two days, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, he will revive us. After two days, doesn't start this third day. After two days, there is a revival. And then, my brothers and sisters, uh, there is the 70th week of Daniel, and then the third day comes. The third day we shall live in his sight. So, brothers and sisters, in the past 16 years, we see over the face of the earth, that men have stated, after two days, we are living in the third day. Brothers and sisters, for 16 odd years, there's been no revival in Israel. Brothers and sisters, God has been still dealing with Gentiles. And we can say, brothers and sisters, 
that that mystery of god period brothers and sisters was something that the jewish prophets never understood but god through the apostle paul went back to the book of isaiah and my brothers and sisters in chapter 1 and verses 10 he showed us how god will start dealing with gentiles but then my brothers and sisters further understanding came to the body of christ through the apostle paul that my brothers and sisters god will be dealing with gentiles but why didn't paul talk about a time piece why didn't paul brothers and sisters uh, state well you know what there is something called the two days in hosea because my brothers and sisters if god gave the apostle paul the understanding of the two days brothers and sisters it would have taken every expectancy away it would have taken my brothers and sisters the joy in being able to preach about the gospel of christ that is why god elevated another apostle in 96 ad john the revelator on the isle of patmos and god gave to john the first church age and the last church age and seven church ages and he gave it in order brothers and sisters so that in time there would be a people on earth that will go back historically and see when did the ephesian church age start and then look at 2000 years of time and see where the approximate time that the last church age will end and then it will be the last people or the last generation that will go back just like the apostle paul and say in chapter 1 of hosea verses 10 shows us the beginning of the two days and we can go in chapter 6 and verses 2 and see where the two days end because it says after two days he will revive us brothers and sisters and when they see that revival is happening in israel brothers and sisters and events around are moving to that point they can be able to surely declare brothers and sisters the exact numerical calculation at that time brothers and sisters what year it should have started and what year it would have ended but brothers and sisters that doesn't mean at this moment of time we should be afraid and let's fear set in our soul well you know brother branham's calculation didn't work out and brother jackson's calculation work out and therefore there is nothing else in the word of god that can give us a time piece brothers and sisters the apostle paul went in the book of isaiah and he read chapter 1 of verses 10 and he saw how the beginning of the time piece for gentiles but god did not give the apostle paul the ending point because it would have taken the expectancy away but he would give the end time fivefold ministry and understanding that they can both through history go back and see where the gentile dispensation started and they can work with the historical figures that we have by history to more or less say wherein it will approximately end and my brothers and sisters that will not make any of those children feel well we have to sit back now and that we should not feel for children of god or 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 feel that there is not preparation to be done my brothers and sisters that will actually make children of god want to go more on the knees want to say to other individuals time is running out brother sister we have a short space of time and we need to be able to put our lives right and need to walk with god 
Because, brothers and sisters, actually now, you don't even need so much to have, brothers and sisters, uh, a, a specific uh, timepiece and timetable because of the way the events are happening. Brothers and sisters, this coronavirus has shaken humanity. The brothers and sisters, they want to understand where we are living in time. But God has helped us by his grace to give us a further understanding out of his word of God. I pray this morning the Lord will encourage you to look again in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Ephesians, and finally in the book of Revelation and be able to see that God has not left us without an understanding of where we are living in time. May the Lord bless you now. And let us bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to be living at this hour of time. Lord, across the world, we see there are many saints, Lord, that are on the beds of affliction. Lord, many children of God, Lord, are looking for understanding out of your word. Where are we living in time? What is happening on the face of the earth? Lord, you've given the bride of Jesus Christ a picture in his word. Lord, I pray that you will bless your children and anoint their eyes to let them understand that no matter the conditions that are on the face of the earth, be they on a bed of affliction, Lord, that they can take courage that, Lord, you are going to deal with the body of Christ across the world. Because, Lord, you have your eyes upon us. May your nail-pierced hands reach out to those that are sick, Lord. Lord, that need a touch. Lord, I pray you will minister to them. Help them to know, Lord, that you have not forgotten about them. Neither have you forgotten about us. But, Lord, you are the one that has sent a messenger to this age, that it is through his message, Lord, you would have warned us, you are bringing that mystery of God, period, to a completion. Lord, I pray now, may we take courage at this hour of time and walk on for thee. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you this morning, brothers and sisters. Amen. Life is full of snares 
And trials seem so hard to bear It's then that I reach for That hand I know is always there And knowing he still cares I'll bow my head and say this little prayer Yeah.